What's up everybody? Uh, welcome to Bike Taylor. Today we are gonna do a build. Um, so uh, a customer had bought a bike, brand new. Um, he didn't really like the group set on there. It's an 11 speed GRX, nice, but um, he wanted DI2 and 12 speed. So uh, I've stripped most of the bike already. Um, I've cut down the, uh, the steerer tube, um, but what we'll film today is I'll, I'll show you what it looks like now with nothing on there. And then I'll just come back periodically just to show you some of the components as they go on. So here's the bike. It's a Scott, actually, what's the model? Can't remember, Addict, what is it? That's the Addict Gravel, all right, uh, there it is. Um, so we've already cut down the steerer, um, pulled out all the components. Uh, those are the wheels that came with. And he's also got a second set of wheels, some zips uh, with uh, these 30 mil gravel tires. So I think the idea being that uh, he can flip out depending on what he's riding. Uh, here is uh, the group set components. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's, it's all uh, 12 speed Altegra DI2. Um, haven't actually looked to see that it's all compatible, but hopefully it is. Uh, rotor cranks and a power meter. Uh, that was the bar tape. So, uh, yep, here we go. All right, so we're currently charging the battery for the DI2. Um, I think it was pretty low. So uh, we need to do that to pair it up with the uh, shifters. So in the meantime, uh, let's install chain rings and the uh, power meter and the crank. So I'll get that all out and uh, show you what we're doing there. Okay, so uh, power meter uh, is there. Chain rings have to go this way uh, around with the four bolt pattern. Um, cranks are gonna obviously come down that way. Uh, do it, rotate it around. Um, this little notch means that it's in line with the crank arm. And then we've got our four bolts. We'll put some Loctite on, tighten it up and carry on. So we've got the rings uh, installed, uh, lined it up here with the rotor cranks. One, two, three, four, five, have not lined it up. So we'll do that again, line it up there. One, two, three, four, five with the notches because these are just round rings, so we don't need it. I'm going to put a very small amount of some retaining compound uh, in over here and then we'll put the crank on and tighten it up to the recommended which I think it said was 35 newton meters. I'll get out my torque wrench, do that now and carry on. So we got that all assembled, tighten that all up uh, to 35 or a bit over 35 newton meters. Um, so that's all good to go. Uh, while we're still waiting for the battery to charge, um, I'd like to connect it up and just make sure that the shifters and all of that is connected and working before we install it on the bike. But we're waiting, so I've gone ahead and started putting the shifters on. Um, and I think the next thing I'll do as well is, is run the hydro lines, get the brakes all set up. And then when that's all done, we can then go back to that. But in the meantime, I've just put them on, used the markings on the bar just as a quick guide. We'll put the bike on the ground uh, have a look and see that we're happy with where the shifters are sitting. Um, and then uh, we'll move on to the hydraulics. All right, so it was a proper battle getting the cable through here. Um, they haven't put any guides or anything in there. Uh, there's some pretty sharp turns right around here. So uh, it was a battle uh, to get it through, but we've got the hose through and we've just attached the caliper on there. Um, and we've put the rear one through, that's a little bit easier, just feed it up through and up here. Um, I've added one of these to that rear hose so that it doesn't rattle around in here. Um, now we're gonna uh, uh, just assemble the headset um, and feed it underneath the uh, stem. As you can see though, this bike was assembled and uh, ready for pickup for the customer from, from the shop he bought it from. There's no grease here. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot, but there should be some grease on there and there is barely any grease on this bearing. It's a gravel bike. We definitely want some grease 
on the bearings uh, in the headset. So I'll grease that up and then put the fork in, run the cables underneath the stem, get that assembled, then I'll show you what that looks like. So here we are, uh, we've got it underneath, um, coming through this cable guide here. Let's get under here. Through your guide here, and then there's another one that bolts on, so you've just got to feed the cables either side of that. Um, now what we do is we fit the headset, uh, so the bearings are in and greased. This is your compression plug, so this goes in. We tighten it up. Uh, you can see it's got this texture to grip into the fork uh, steerer. So we'll tighten that up, uh, usually eight to nine newton meters. Once that's in nice and tight, then we can come and put our uh, top uh, uh, cover on. Um, and using this, we adjust tight enough to create compression in the headset. So tight enough that there's no play or wiggle, um, but not so tight that we bind the bearings and we can't actually turn the steering, uh, the handles. Um, so we'll tighten that down. And then once that's good, then we make sure that's straight with the wheel and we tighten up your pinch bolts to, on this stem, six newton meters. So now that we have a little bit of charge in the battery, um, I've connected it up to, well, we already had it connected to charge, but um, basically here's your button. You click and hold it until you get this flashing blue light. Now we're in connection mode and we can go ahead and connect it to the levers. I have to leave the camera so that I can actually do that using the eTube app, um, which I'll do now, um, and then we'll come back. All right, so we've done the um, connection uh, using the eTube app, which was relatively easy. You just have that plugged into the battery, um, and then you click and hold until the blue light's flashing, then you're in connection mode, you connect it up, you scan the little uh, QR codes on either shifter, connect it, so relatively simple. And now just checking that it is all working, so we've connected the front derailleur, and uh, well, here's your rear derailleur, shifting, all good. And front derailleur, all good. So we are good, so we'll start putting it all in the bike now. Um, battery obviously has to go into the seat post and then we'll run the uh, wire from the rear derailleur up to the battery and from the front derailleur up to the battery. Uh, and then we can connect the hoses up and then we're pretty close to finish. Just cranks in and off we go. So I'll start putting all the wires in and come back. Uh, just one quick thing, um, cause this is a direct mount hanger. Uh, we actually take, we're gonna take this bit out of the derailleur and it's gonna connect uh, straight into this bolt here. So that will go straight onto there. So I'll do that now. So that's it there, just straight on there. And here's this little plate that's come out. Uh, so the B tension now just goes straight onto this direct mount. Uh, all right, now we're gonna run this through. All right, so we've pushed the battery up the seat post. It's all working. I just checked that it's all shifting. So that's all good. So next thing to do is connect the hydro lines, uh, make sure that's all good, and then we'll go bottom bracket and cranks. Uh, and then we're pretty much just finishing touches. So pretty close, good. All right, uh, we have connected the hoses. They're feeling pretty good. So uh, we probably don't need to bleed them. Uh, I didn't lose too much fluid. I've left the hoses a little bit longer than I probably would, um, just in case uh, the customer decides he needs to change bars or a uh, slight position change on the, the hoods. We, we don't want to go too short. So I've left them a little bit long, um, barely noticeable once the bike's uh, bars are wrapped and all of that, but uh, it's just, just precautionary. Uh, so yeah, so that's all looking good now. And uh, I will put the bottom bracket and cranks in uh, and then we'll carry on from there. Uh, so just putting in the bottom bracket, we're gonna put a little bit of retaining compound uh, on the cup and in there, press them in. Uh, that should stop any creaks uh, from starting. 
Okay, bottom bracket's been pressed in uh, both sides. Uh, so that was using this wheels manufacturing press, which I love. Uh, so now we'll put the rotor cranks in. Uh, we're gonna have to work out what the spacing is. So just a bit of a trial and error. I'll put it in, uh, have a measure, see what we're looking at and just go from there. So we've installed the cranks, um, it's pushed all the way in, uh, but you can see there's still a gap there. Uh, I just measured it, it's about two millimeters. Um, and then what we've done is you can put a ruler in. Uh, where's my ruler now? Here. Uh, so if you put a ruler in, I'm not gonna be able to do this one hand very well. You, you measure it to the same point on the cranks on both sides and you can have a look at the middle, which is where those are. And we're getting, I think it's about almost bang on 60 from the drive side and I think we're at about 62-ish. 62-ish from the non-drive. So we need to basically uh, bring, we need to bring the cranks back towards us this way. So we're two mil further that way. So in theory, We'll have to play it a little bit. Um, if I put two mil on this side, that would bring this out to 62 and that back to 60. So it should just be one millimeter on this side and one mil on that side, and we should be close. So I'll try that now and see what happens uh, using the provided spaces. All right, so we put that millimeter in there. So we're at about 61 now on that side. Camera angle's a bit funny and the same on this side if i can get this right um it lands up being yeah 61 and then the tiny little bit of slack that was left we've used with the uh ring over there uh just to take up any slack so we've just tightened that up and pinched it up with the bolt um so the cranks are installed now um so yeah so basically now we've just got to Put the chain on, uh, adjust the derailleurs, make sure that's all good. Um, so I'll do all of that now um, and then uh, bar tape and we're done. All right, so uh, first of all, I'll just say um, the customer gave me a wax chain, which is making a little bit of a mess uh, on the bike. So that's what that is. But um, yeah, we've put the chain on. Uh, uh, I always measure it. Uh, I put it in the small chain ring and then the smallest cog over here and you need to have a little bit of tension on the uh, jockey wheel cage. Um, anyway, uh, I've put the chain on, I've run through all the gears, checked the B tension limits, all of that sort of stuff. It's all looking good. Uh, that's all pretty standard. Um, if you haven't ever worked with this new 12 speed, uh, so there's a button under here. And then there's a little light at the top here. So if you want to go into pairing mode, you just click so that's pairing if I wanted to use the app. Um, uh, to make adjustments, you get it so you hold it for two to five seconds until you got this solid yellow. And then you come up to here and you use your, uh, so that's for your rear derailleur, up, down adjustments. And if you wanted to do the front derailleur, you use the front. Um, and that makes little micro adjustments uh, for the rear. You're supposed to uh, put it in the fifth from the top and uh, click until you hear it rubbing on the fourth cog there and then come back five clicks. Wasn't quite right for this one, so we've done a little bit more just playing back and forth. Um, and then the front derailleur, uh, big chain ring, uh, you just click until you got about a one or half mil in between the chain and this, this plate here and then you put it in the lower one do the same thing again and you want about zero to 0.5 of a mil on the inside when you got it in the big uh, normal sort of stuff without getting into it and then to come out of this uh, you just click and hold the button until that goes off so now we're good again uh so yeah so that's all done um i've checked it's all looking good um so we'll just wrap the bars and come back Quick espresso break.
Yes. Oh, no, no, no. All right, there is the finished bike. Uh, looks pretty good. We got these zips with the 30s, which are actually measuring more like 32, 33. Cut down the stem, wrap the bars. Got the Power 2 Max on the rotor cranks. The Altegra 12 speed DI2 with the direct mount, which is pretty cool. Good looking bike. And he's got a couple extra wheels to go with it. So the last thing for me to really do, uh, which doesn't need to be done on camera is just make sure that the spacing is good for these rotors and those rotors because uh, there can be a bit of discrepancy so that he can flip the wheels back and forth really easily um and a little bit of sealant in these tires and we're good to go thanks for watching yeah thanks for watching and uh we'll uh see you next time at bike taylor